Hi, my name is Gur, and uh, today I'm going to show you um, Numbers. Numbers is the ZDSP programmer, and we will try to show you how to install the software needed for using Numbers, how to program a cartridge, and how to use Numbers with the ZDSP. Okay, so first thing we need to do with Numbers is to install those two software that work with Numbers. One of them is the SPIN ASM. Um, it's a software designed by SPIN semiconductors that is used to write the uh, DSP code. And the second of it is a, is a PIC kit made by Microchip which is used to write the text uh, for uh, the display. Uh, both of these software will be available for download from the TipTop website. Uh, all you will need to go is the, the uh, numbers page and there will be a link there to download both program. So before you connect numbers, and this is very important, you need to install those two software and um, they will in also install the drivers. So um, right now here I got them, both of these software, I download them to the desktop. I'm going to start with the spin uh, semiconductor. So double click on that, I'll go and run it. Um, need to hit the agree. Um, let it just do its regular things. Um, install. Um, prepare and install. Okay. Now this can work both on Windows XP and Windows 7. Okay. It's thinking. This computer might be a little slower because we're actually taking a, capturing a video of the screen right now, so it takes some of the resources. Okay, here we go. So once the spin is installed, it's going to create folders. Um, one of the folders will be a project folder where you can put all your designs in and create just complete project, eight programs for the ZDSP. Um, and uh, you will have also a folder, if I'm not mistaken, called source, which will hold all the specific design themselves. Um, okay, now that's the important stuff, you need to install the driver. So let's just do what you need to do. And as soon as we're going to connect numbers, uh, it's going to ask for this driver. So we're going to need to show it the directory. We're finished. Okay, so again, so far we didn't connect anything, we just installed, um, everything is complete, and now we're going to install Pickit. So again, I got the Pickit here ready, and I'm going to go and hit Pickup Setup. Uh, just let it, it's doing its regular standard installation. Some legal stuff. <laughs> okay. So the Pickit um, is basically a hex editor. Um, it's the device that is used to uh, write the device, but let's say the software used to write the text and edit text. Okay, so we got both of them ready. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in numbers. And let me do that. Okay, as soon as I did, um, Windows tells you we found new hardware, a Picket. Now the Picket has a, a driver that is already built into Windows, so um, he's not going to ask him for that. Um, in a second he will say he found a Spin Semi SPN, and he just found both drivers. If it doesn't find a driver. Oh, here we go. He didn't find a driver, so we're going to need to show him. Um, we'll say no. Um, not at this time. He's uh, asking um, if he can find the driver himself, but we will guide him. Install from a specific uh, location. Go and hit next. Um, include and search. Now we're going to browse this computer. We're going to go to uh, my computer and it should be local disk C program files and here you're gonna to need to look for the spin here you go spin IDE and here is the driver okay click OK 
and hit next and it's installing your driver okay we can hit finished and we're basically ready if you look at the Z at numbers right now you will see that the two lights are on the DSP and the text lights are on so now um, we can go and turn on spin ASM it's already created a shortcut on the desktop and the first indication that you see that everything works it's showing spin semi online it means it's communicating with numbers the second thing we can do just to check that everything works fine is to open picket and picket will communicate with numbers and if everything is fine it will just sort of set that it's connected with the with the host. Let's see, it takes it a little while. Okay, here we go. Okay, so as you can see here, it says pick it to found and connected. So we're basically ready. Um, numbers in, is installed, and from now we can uh, go on and start showing you how to uh, program cards and all the good stuff. Okay, so now uh, we're going to show you how to use numbers. Um, let's burn our first program. So the first thing to do um, is to check numbers working. We got the two green lights working. That means that everything is fine. Um, we're going to take an empty cartridge. And the only thing that is uh, important is to know how to put it, the orientation. So as you can see, it got two little chips on that side and a flat side. You always put numbers, excuse me, you always put the cartridge so the little chips is looking at you. As soon as you plug it in the correct way you have a little light saying card is okay. That means everything is fine. Now all you need to do is just put it aside and go to the editor. So now we're on the Spin uh, Semiconductor website where we have some free DSP programs and let's download something. Uh, let's see what we got here. It's a reverb, hypus, blue slopus. So let me do this. I will save it to the uh, desktop. Um, yeah. Okay. Save. Okay. It's a small file. Let me just close this. And now I'm going to open the Spin ASM. Spin ASM is open. And what I just downloaded is just one program. It's one effect. And right now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to write one effect to the card. So I'm going to do open. Now here's the thing. Open project means that you're going to open a complete project of eight effects. Um, here I'm just going to open one. So I'm going to open. Um, already in the spin source folder we can see that there's a few uh, effects sitting in there. But I'm going to grab the one from the desktop. So let me go to the desktop, use the one we just download, and uh, it's a reverb, and I'm going to do open. As soon as you click open, you can actually see the code. Um, it's all in front of you, and you can tweak it, you can play with it, you can do a lot of stuff, uh, or you can just burn it. Now, this code is uh, really nice made, and you can see part one means potentiometer, and it says what's the, uh, what does it do, so part one is reverb, to infinity, um, part two is a high pass filter, and part three is a low pass filter, and even tells you like a two pole picking eight octaves. So it's uh, a lot of nice information. What I'm gonna hit now is the assemble, assemble to program one. That means that it's gonna program this um, effect into the program one on the cartridge. So I'm gonna hit assemble. It's reading the EPROM, it's reading the data, it's verifying, and it's it will tell you EPROM write success succeed and verify. That means that we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is I can plug this out and use it in the ZDSP and actually hear the sound. Now I'm gonna show you how to do a complete. Let me just put it in. I'm gonna show you how to do a complete project. So I'm gonna go and close spin. Just so we start from scratch again and I'm gonna go to file open project 
And I already have an example project built into uh, uh, the project folders on the spin um, main root folder. So I'm going to open that to open. And you can see a list of programs. Um, so room reverb 1, room reverb 2, uh, room chorus reverb. There's a bunch of stuff. And then there's some stuff, uh, some programs which are empty, unchanged, no override. Double clicking here will open and I can just pick up another. Let me just add this one that we just download and to this project. So just by double clicking on any of this, you can change the order. And of course, order make a big difference because with the ZDSP, you can switch uh, programs in real time with the trigger and uh, voltage control. So this can make an interesting effect. Uh, depends on the order of the programs. Now all I need to do is make sure I click the right EPROM here and hit the build and again it's now downloading eight programs into the cartridge and as you can see it says build completed that means that this cartridge is right now having a complete eight programs built into it okay let me show you how it sounds so I'm gonna plug it in right now there's no um, text for the display so we're just gonna have those little white uh, bricks and here we go we got some